So is China already looking at moving in to replace the Western companies in Russia? Let's take a look. So uh, about a week ago, I put out a podcast talking about uh, the Western oil companies leaving Russia. BP, they're out. Shell, Exxon, Equinor, the Norwegian company, they're out. Uh, and <laughs> so I had mentioned at the end who probably will be coming in, and I didn't name anybody. But here we've got an article from Reuters. Uh, basically uh, discussing with CNOC, the Chinese oil company, and their comment is it's too early to uh, move in with new investments in Russia. Um, they'll be there at the time of their choosing, and that's an issue for the West, for the world supply of energy. And uh, the, the reason is that uh, that CNOC currently is in a huge LNG project in the Arctic. They're not leaving. The Japanese are also in. Uh, they're not leaving. So who is leaving? Well, Western Europe is really the area that's dependent on Russian energy and Russian gas. Uh, and given the situation, I understand the uh, desire to end that, uh, but the, the bigger question is going to be, where do we go from here? So let's just look at who the buyers are of uh, Russian oil, and then we'll talk about natural gas. What it looks like, clearly uh, China is the biggest buyer of Russian oil, and that will continue to expand, possibly along with India, uh, some other places in the world. I'm sure uh, Sri Lanka is critically short right now. but. The main buyers potentially are going to be Southeast Asia. Well, let's just leave it at that. But who currently are the buyers? Well, China is almost half, but behind that you have Germany at 850,000 barrels a day, the Netherlands at 700,000 barrels a day, Poland at 500,000 barrels a day, and uh, Belgium, Turkey, France, the UK are all significant buyers of Russian oil. Uh, and then, of course, the U.S. has been the fourth largest buyer of Russian oil at 630,000 barrels a day. Of all of those, the one probably the laziest replace that is going to be the U.S. Uh, but look at the rest of Western Europe. Where is that going to come from? Um, Oil is one thing, and yes, there are tankers that can move around the world, so that's, that's part of it. But let's look at the other part of it is the natural gas. Uh, so at a time when the world is concerned about climate change, we're going to abandon pipelines. We, we're doing it in Canada. Uh, we're doing it in a lot of places, uh, which makes no sense from an environmental standpoint. But let's look at where the natural gas is going to come in from. People talk about the Middle East. Uh, Saudi is spending $10 billion on a shale gas development project. Adnoc just signed a bunch of contracts to develop unconventional. But those are, I would say, geographically constrained uh, areas that are going to take a long time to bring up to speed. So look at Qatar. Qatar is a huge source of LNG, but they're contracted up. So Qatar is not coming to the rescue for Western Europe, and th there isn't enough LNG offloading capability right now, to the best of my knowledge anyway. But Qatar's not coming. Australia, we're really we're going to load LNG on in Australia, move it to uh, Europe, and uh, unload there. Again, Australia's contracted as far as I know. So anything that's going to come online is going to be long term on there. So where would the most likely source of gas be? Well, uh, if you Cross off Qatar, Australia, geographically, that's a long ways, uh, and historically their market has been Asia, which is relatively close. Uh, then we start to look around and draw circles, and you know the U.S. is there 
uh, thinking that they can supply. So the most likely supply of natural gas for Europe would be the Northeast. The Marcellus is a huge reserve, kind of geographically stranded, uh, but let's look at where facilities would go in. Uh, there's not gonna be any LNG uh, facilities going into New York, to Maine, to Boston, to Washington. Uh, it's just not gonna happen. Try to build pipelines, try to build uh, anything to do with oil and gas facilities on the Northeast to rescue Europe that's not going to happen. So then you go to Houston, then the question is, is where are the resources to supply massive amounts of gas? And I, I just don't think they're there. The Barnett Shale was supposed to supply gas for 100 years. It's no rigs running there now. The Eagle Ford was supposed to be this massive expanse. Guess what? Had some sweet spots, nothing else there. Uh, and you know, I, I, that, the, the expansion capability. So there's some deeper plays uh, in Texas, but they're very expensive, uh, they're high decline, and I don't think the expanse is that much because they are unconventional, so it's lots of rigs running for just to maintain anything. So I don't think the, the one place in the world that you could build LNG that's friendly to oil and gas is the Gulf Coast of the U.S., and I just don't think it's gonna come from there. So um, that's my comments. Uh, CNOC is already looking, knocking at the door. I'm sure there's discussions going on. It's too early to move in. Uh, and again, I would say the best move for the West is to find a quick way to settle this war uh, and to stay engaged with the Arctic and the Russian gas projects. They're massive, they're long-term and uh, that's the best solution. Beyond that, uh, we'll see where this goes, but as predicted, CNOC, the Chinese, are already looking uh, at the Arctic gas and oil that's being abandoned now by the Western oil companies. I don't think it's a good move. I think it's got long-term uh, issues from the world supply of energy, and uh, there we go. That's it. Thanks for watching uh, Energy Today podcast. Thank you.